Let's do it. Hello, and welcome to Podiatry Practice Mastery. Uh, I have today uh, Nikki with me. Uh, welcome, Nikki. John, thanks for having me on the show. It's an honor to be here, sir. You're welcome. You're welcome. So I'm I'm so excited because you are a, a thought leader and you kind of train other business owners uh, in terms of helping their business be successful. So tell me a little bit. I always like to start. Tell me a little bit about your backstory, kind of how you got into helping people. Well, actually, I'm originally an immigrant from the Middle East. I'm a Christian from Iran. When I was 11 years old, the Islamic Revolution took place in Iran. And my late father, God rest his soul, he could see the writing on the wall. This wasn't going to be a great place for him to raise his Christian family. So he made a plan. He got us out of Iran. Eventually, we settled where I now live in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. My dad is a hero to me. He changed the trajectory of our family's life. And dad really imbued upon me a love for business, entrepreneurship, and helping people. He was an uplifter of people. You know, if you knew dad and you were looking for work, he'd help you find a job. If you were looking to start a business, he would help you get your business off the ground. If you were trying to buy a car, a house, or an apartment, you didn't quite have enough money, he'd top you up so you could do that. Wow. And a lot yeah. of people would go, wow, that's amazing. Who does that? Well, the late, great Napoleon Ballou, for one. Well, why would he do that, Nikki? Well, he was a Christian. He, 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 he felt he'd been blessed by God. It was his duty as a Christian to share those blessings. Yeah. And secondly, he was successful. He had the wherewithal to be able to help. I wanted to be like dad. I wanted to help people. So I got into business as an entrepreneur and I got in the helping professions. I help entrepreneurs. And here's what I saw. I came from an entrepreneurial background. So many good people go into business. And I'm sure you've seen this too, Don. And they're good at what they do, but they're not good at business. They don't get marketing, sales, hiring, firing, culture, financial statements. They don't get any of that stuff. So, you know, I kind of took the approach of Michael Gerber and the E-Myth Revisited to help people create systems, processes, so their businesses can run with or without them. And then a lot of the folks we work with are kind of people who do what they do based on their expertise. And marketing and sales frightens them because these are People who are like, I don't want to be one of those pushy sales guys. You know, you know what I'm talking about. You go in the room, you want to buy, you want to buy, you want to buy. They don't want to be that kind of guy or gal. Yeah. So they would, they would go, well, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to go after sales. I'm not going to be salesy. Well, there's a problem with that. You shouldn't be pushy, but if you don't go after business, you should be going after people who really need your help. And could you use your help? You're actually doing them a disservice. You're doing yourself a disservice. And you're also doing humanity a disservice because some charlatan is going to come in there who doesn't care they're going to scoop up the business not deliver anything and the sum total of goodness in the world goes down so i thought to myself look i get business and i'm a loving man and i can help these people like learn how to sell through serving i know how to do that but that word sales just got stuck in people's crawl so i rebranded sales to service Nobody wants to be sold down, but everybody loves to be served by a caring human being. So I love if that. you show people how to lead from service, then sales becomes a natural conversation. That's how a lot of people double, triple, quadruple their business. Wow. Wow. So let's let's talk about some of these. Let's say you're going into a clinic, a, a, a podiatry clinic. We do we I guess you could say we sell or we prescribe certain things and certain things aren't covered by insurance. I guess you would mean you have to sell them because if you're having you're being let's talk about one thing. Let's uh, shoe inserts, orthotics, right? Not covered in, in, in Massachusetts, five hundred and fifty dollars a pair. A lot of times doctors, you know, we believe in them. If insurance covered them, every patient would have them. Right. But if insurance doesn't cover them. We're not always offering them. So, so kind of go through, tell me, teach a little bit uh, how you would help uh, doctors to serve their patients more with something like that. If that's a good example, or you can pick another one. No, that's a great example. So let's say you've got a patient who's there with you. And let's say that they're a runner as an example, right? And when they run, their feet hurt. Has that happened in your experience ever, a runner with their feet hurting? Yep. And let's say you, you've worked with them, you've done a few things to help them out, but the pain's still there, it's not going away. So you're going to go, listen, how often do you run? Well, I run three times a week for about an hour each time. Okay, so this is a big deal for you, right? So listen, I've got a solution for you that will guarantee take the problem away. Are you interested in the solution? 100% I'm interested in the solution. Okay, great. The solution, though, has an investment required with it. Are you someone who's willing to invest in not having your feet hurt? And what would it be like if your feet didn't hurt? 
Oh mm-hmm. my God, I would be able to enjoy myself after my runs. I wouldn't have to take some days off because I'm hurting. I wouldn't be so grumpy with my wife or my husband. You know what I mean? Um, I wouldn't fall asleep early because I've been in pain for weeks. Okay, so great. If we took all that away, what would life be like for you? Whoa, my God, you know, my wife and I, my husband and I would get along better. We'd, we'd be able to like show each other. We love each other more rather than me fighting with them. I, uh, I, I would be able to rest uh, more readily. I, I would be able to sleep uh, and not oversleep. It would be amazing. So great. Buy these orthotics. Let's go. What's the investment? Just 550 bucks. Great. Let's go. That's how you sell orthotics. Not you need to buy orthotics. Nobody cares about orthotics. People don't buy their way into something. They buy their way out of something. They're not buying orthotics. They're buying their way out of foot pain. Mm. You follow me? In fact, if I were you, um, and if I were advising you as an example, I'd say, go become known in your area in Massachusetts as the foot pain relief guy for runners. I work with runners. I get rid of their foot pain. And let me tell you, you get known for that, they'll pay you anything. They'll come see you from far and wide. And there'll be a lot of people that'll go, I just need my foot pain to go away. I don't really care what it costs. Because if their pain is big enough, they're going to do something about it. They're not buying their way into something orthotics. They're buying their way out of something, foot pain. They're buying their way out of hell. They want to go to heaven. The bridge to heaven is orthotics. You follow me? Focus on, on solving the problem, not on selling your product. That's what so many people do in business. They get so enamored with they and themselves and what they do and how awesome they are and how great their product is and how great their methods are. Nobody cares. I'm sorry to burst your bubble. No one cares. They care about themselves. They care about their problems. They're there to get you to help them. And you need to realize that and stop thinking about yourself. Humble yourself. Be a man or woman of humility and be there to serve the person not to serve your bank book, your pocketbook. And ironically, if you serve the person, your bank book's just going to just go ka-ching, 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 ka-ching. Money's going to rain down from the sky into your business. Hmm. I, I, I love it. I, I, I sometimes find, I, I actually have a, a slide when I explain plantar fasciitis. I talk about like, what is the problem and, and how does it affect you? And then what would it feel like if that was resolved? But what I want to be clear about what I sometimes struggle with in these conversations, it's an, for me, it's an awkward conversation because as doctors, we tend to be so like, okay, you need a cortisone, you need this, you need this versus having that open end conversation where they can really talk and express themselves, you know, and and what they're really feeling. But that's those type of conversations I think are more beneficial than saying, okay, versus me telling you, you need this, 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 no one's going to want it. No one wants anything. So that's good. Good. Give me some more. Give me some more things. Give me some more actionable items or actionable tips that you have for small business owners. You got to stand out. You can't be all things to all people. And uh, I'll I'll tell you something. So many people in business, you ask them what they do. I'm a podiatrist. I'm a a, a naturopath. I'm a chiropractor. I'm an acupuncturist. Nobody cares. You're standing in the sea of sameness if you talk about that. You need to be talking about how you help a particular group of people. So there was a chiropractor we worked with in Toronto, and he was a chiropractor. So thrilled to be a chiropractor, Dr. James Fung. So, you know, God bless you, but you're stuck at a certain level of income. How do we move you to the next level of income? Well, what are you really good at? He said, well, I actually am really good at dealing with concussion protocol and scoliosis. I go, scoliosis? Why don't we brand you as a scoliosis man? You're the man who works with athletes with scoliosis and you help them perform at the highest level. And that was good because a certain percent of athletes had scoliosis. So he said, if you have scoliosis and you're suffering from this pain, this pain, and this pain, you need to come in for a complimentary assessment. Thousand people signed up to come see him for that complimentary assessment. Over 800 of them ended up becoming his patients. Mm. Boom. Boom. I, I really like that. I think I was talking to, so my wife is a, is Brazilian and a lot of my friends are, are, are really, and, and you go to a Brazilian and you ask, well, what do you do? <laughs> and what they say is, well, what do you need? You know, they, they do everything for everyone and uh, they don't do anything really well. But I think as podiatrists, a lot of times we think we, oh, we do everything involving the foot and ankle. But if you focus on heel pain, plantar fasciitis, Achilles tendonitis, something 
Now, when you when you say you focus on that, does that mean you have to have your whole website just on that one thing? Or what, what are your thoughts to that? Can you talk about other things or should you just purely focus on that for a period of time or what? Look, if you try to be all things to all people, you'll be nothing to nobody. While if you try to be one thing to a particular group of people with a particular set of problems, you're going to go deep inside there and you're going to work with them. And now guess what? If you help somebody overcome foot pain from running, as an example, yep. okay, and you're the, 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 the foot pain, the runner's foot pain doc. And then all of a sudden, some of these folks have come to see you for their foot pain and they'll, they'll go, they, they twisted their ankle or whatever. And they're going to go, doc, yeah, I twisted my ankle. Do you help with that too? You go, I can help you with that. Those opportunities become more open for you. Once mm. you've owned the foot pain for runner space, then you can start to say, okay, now we've also got a new specialty we're open up. We're still really good at this, but we've got a new specialty. And then you put a lot of messaging into that new specialty. And you can have three, four, five, six areas of specialty. And at some point you'll become, I'm the foot guy. I deal with everything to do with your feet. You got ankle pain from running feet. I'm the foot guy for athletes, foot guy for runners, foot awesome. guy for basketball players, whatever it is. That's the way you want to go. Rather than I'm, I do everything about food on podiatrists. I can do it all. I can do it all. I'm sure you can. But you can do it all and stay poor, or you can do it all, or you can do one thing really specifically and get rich. That's nice. Rich. Now, when you talk about the messaging, what, what do you, I don't know if you help people with the messaging. Are you talking YouTube videos, podcasts? That's what we do. What, which one, which ones do you recommend for your chiropractor, doctor, your clients? Okay. So first and foremost, we got to go back to first principles. Okay. We don't put you on a show. We don't have you do a show or a book or any of that stuff until we know that we've got you properly positioned with the right message. So we have to help you create some powerful messaging and thought leadership. So this is an example of some messaging I've created in an area that I'm excited about, which is high performance and winning in business, okay? okay. These are 56 different pieces of IP that I created. This is a positioning matrix, which you know is a very powerful tool. I didn't create this tool. Someone else created it, but we use this. And I've created this to position myself to the groups of folks I want to work with. And then I've got a whole methodology around marketing and sales that we put oh. together. We have you do all of that stuff first. Then we go, okay, start doing this through a podcast, through a book, through an outreach program, through training your front desk staff. And the front desk thing, according to my sweetheart, Teresa, combined with all this can help add a half a million dollars a year to a practice. She said that in, in, in Toronto, there's practices whose front desks are so sub-optimized that they're leaving a, between a quarter million and three quarters of a million on the table every year. That's yeah. nuts in my mind. That's, it should be doing such a thing like that. But you get the messaging lined up, you get some powerful sales conversations going, and then you turn on the taps with podcasting, book writing, you know, front like desk that. outreach, et cetera, et cetera. I, I, I like, because I'm sure you've seen the opposite. People kind of shooting, shooting all around and, and nothing, nothing happens until you can focus on that one area, your, your unique ability. And listen, here's the other thing I want to say to you, right? One of my uh, clients used to be uh, the great Robin Sharma, the author of the legendary book, The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari, sold 20 million copies. Robin, when I was a fitness trainer, I, I coached him. And Robin used to tell me, Nikki, you ever want to double your income? Triple your investment in personal and professional development. Hire coaches, join masterminds, attend conferences, purchase courses and do them and read books. And if you're a doctor and you think, oh, I went to school, I already, I did all my schooling, I'm, I'm enough, you're nuts. You need to be schooled in how to be an effective businessman or businesswoman. That is a whole different thing than what you do as a doctor, okay? Just because you're smart and educated in that doesn't mean you're smart and educated on the business side. You got to humble yourself. And this is a problem a lot of docs have because they have docs. I hate to say it, but they get a little arrogant. They get a little cocky. Look at me. I'm smart. I went to school. I did my degree, blah, blah, blah. I got nothing to learn from anybody else. That's when God kicks you in the keister. That's when God says, let's humble you because you're not mm -hmm. humble. You've got the gift of hubris the, the going through you. And I'm going to take all this away from you. That's the danger zone. You got to humble yourself and go, I still need to learn. You're a doctor. You need to be a lifelong learner. You need to not just learn about your 
your, your craft, you need to learn about a business and running a business and how to make that business brilliant, beautiful, bountiful, and abundant, right? And here's the truth. If you aren't being coached, if you're not part of masterminds, if you're not attending conferences, if you're not doing courses, if you're not reading books about how to grow and how to be more successful, how to be a thought leader, what are you doing? What are you doing? Everyone says I'm, I'm too busy working, right? That's what they're saying. Yeah, that's, that's beautiful, but it's not true. It's really not true. It's just an excuse. Everybody's busy in this day and age. For yep. crying out loud, everybody can come up with a gazillion reasons not to do things. But if you're yep. investing in your business, you need to invest in yourself. You are the most important asset in your business. If you are not taking a minimum of 15 days a year to invest in yourself and your business, time-wise, energy-wise, and money-wise, you are leaving money on the table. You are flushing it down the drain. I, I'm, I'm, you're, you're preaching to the choir. I, I was talking to one of my coaches. I have a couple of coaches. I was trying to, I'm, I'm trying to invest 10% of my gross into myself this year. And so, you know, it's, it's a formidable number and it's kind of hard, you know, I, I, uh, some of the simple things, these are hacks that are, you can, I'll tell you mine and then you tell me yours. So I get two books on, on audible every month that automatically replenish. So I have to read, and they're usually business books that I listen to. Um, I'm part of strategic coach. I've been part of that for oh, eight years, which it's just and like Dan Sullivan lives two, two yeah. streets away from me in Toronto. So I've been doing that for about eight years. I have a, a personal effectiveness coach that I meet every Friday. I do have a podcast coach now every two weeks. So these other people, I, I think they're, they're very, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm working to spend that much money and it, and it's hard to get up to that number, but I find the more I invest, the better my ideas get. And, and the less, the less I do and the more I can delegate to others. So what other things uh, do you, I know you're, you're mastermind. So tell, you can talk a little bit about that or other books that you like well, or things. hundred percent. I'll tell you for myself, I have a main business coach. I have a, um, I have a sales coach. I have a coach uh, for uh, my health and fitness. I have a nutrition coach. I have a relationship coach for my relationship with my lady. I have a relationship coach for my relationship with my teenage sons it's a whole different animal right there. And I also have a coach uh, who coaches me on uh, speaking, speaking, presenting, yeah. and all that jazz as well. She's the best there is in the whole damn world. She's incredible. So I believe in coaching. Now, as far as what we do, all the things you're doing are amazing. And I say, keep doing them. I would recommend to you, you come do a thought leadership program. It'd be cool for you to come and spend three days and learn some of these principles and techniques and start to implement them in your, in your business. That's something that we do. We do three, uh, four of these workshops a year. They're three days long. They're in person. They're in the great city of Toronto. And uh, it's a fantastic way for you to really take all that genius expertise that you have, turn it into powerful messaging and create something we call clusters. And a cluster is a meeting of a message, a market, and a, and a method of delivery. Ooh, it's a really Dan amazing Kennedy, way. this is great. The, the market media match, right? Wonderful. Yeah. Message, market, and, and method of delivery, mm -hmm. right? That's that's some cool stuff. Yeah. And so we say to you, you want to learn about how to create map out clusters that you can launch over time. So what we were talking about earlier is a hypothetical example is like, you know, the runner's foot doctor, right? For foot pain. Then we go, that's one. Then we go, okay, we got a plantar fasciitis for basketball players. We map out about 50, 60 of these. And you take one, two, three, and you go, okay, over the next couple of years, I'm going to launch this one. I'm going to get this to a million a year. Great. Once it's at a million a year, we're going to keep it running at that level and have it grow. Now I'm going to launch the next one. We're going to get that to a million a year. Now I'm going to launch the next one. We're going to get that to a million awesome. a year. And that way you could have five, six, seven of these going. And then all of a sudden, before you know it, you got a $10 million a year practice doing all things that you're super, super good at and super excited about doing and helping people with. And then finally, there could be a time where you go, you know what? I'm going to help some of the uh, these other podiatry docs. I'm going to have an academy for business for podiatry docs. I'm going to be the podiatrist business coach to the podiatry mm -hmm. docs, as an example. And that's the sort of thing that you can start to create, which could be really valuable and really cool. And you could be your own version of strategic coach. Mm -hmm. You know, four times a year, you, you take like a day, two days, you do a retreat somewhere really cool. A whole bunch of people come and learn from you. That could be super exciting and super fantastic. Any podiatrist... Listening to this, I say to you, number one, you should have your own coach, a, a major business coach. Number two, you should definitely go look into thought leadership. You should come do thought leadership with us. 
Number three, you should go learn what my lady Teresa does around this front desk optimization. It sounds like every clinical practice needs to optimize their front desk. Number four, the book reading thing's awesome. Me, I don't do a lot of listening to books. I actually like reading paper books. I get up really early in the morning and I read. That's kind of my thing. Okay. Um, and I, I, I also have done a few... Um, I, I have a, a video channel on Rumble. I don't really use YouTube much anymore because of all the censorship they did the, during the, the lockdowns. I was questioning the efficacy of the, some of the vaccines and they gave me a couple of strikes. So I said, screw you guys. I'm going to go on a free speech platform where I can talk about things that I want to talk about. So I'm on Rumble and I do book reviews, five minute book reviews. I did a cool. book review of Tim Grover's book, Winning. Uh, I did a book review of a biography of Kirk Kerkorian you know, the great Armenian businessman. I did a book review on Captain James Kirk. You know, um, I love doing these book reviews. I love reading. I'm up to 15 books read so far in 2023. My target's 106. And for That's the last awesome. five years, I've done over 100 books a year. Well, and, and if people want to learn more uh, about uh, your eCircle, where can they go? What's the best website? eCircleAcademy.com is our main website. So go, go to that, go check that out. That's the best way to get going. Great. Hey, thank you, Nikki. This was inspiring and uh, I'll be looking forward to, to chatting more. Appreciate it. Thanks for your time, Don. Thanks for having me on.